Noctua finally launched their passive CPU cooler and on the box there's a sticker that says fanless cooling for high-end CPUs and Honestly, I didn't know I could be this aroused by a sticker. Uh, so what we're going to do with this cooler today is, yes, see if it can cool CPUs. But then I'm going to do some unholy things to it. But before we get into that, there's a sponsor for today's video. Today's video is sponsored by Audible, which is for all you busybodies out there that don't actually have time to sit down and read a book and would much rather have someone read it to you. With Audible, you can maintain your active lifestyle, he says, like a marketing loser, while still being well-read. As an Audible member, you'll get one credit every month for any title in their entire premium selection. I would recommend using your first credit on The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, narrated by Stephen Fry, because who doesn't want Stephen Fry tonguing their ears? As a member, you also get full access to the Plus catalog, which has a bunch of guided meditations and podcasts and stuff like that in there, which you don't need any credits for. If this sounds good to you, go to audible.com slash David or text David to 500, 500 to get access to Audible today. Thank you, Audible, for sponsoring today's video. Now, in characteristic Noctua fashion, the packaging was designed by a sewage enthusiast. But honestly, at this point, I'm such a Noctua fangirl, I wouldn't care if it came covered in actual poo. But anyway, let's open it up. This is the accessory pouch that comes with mounting gear, a pretty awesome looking screwdriver, and some thermal paste along with fan brackets. So you can actually attach a fan for some beast cooling to this thing. Oh! Look at that beast! That is spectacular looking. It is the size of a medium planet, but um, that's good, right? So you can see that it's got path for air in just multiple directions. So it can actually go through the side of the heatsink as well, along with the top, the back, the front. Like, there's just so much easy access for air in this cooler, which makes a lot of sense for a passive design. Mounting this cooler is really easy. It uses standard Noctua mounting hardware, which is pretty idiot proof. I did notice that in the user manual, there is a link to a website, which not only has hilarious stock pictures of people doing business, but it's also got an extensive breakdown of various suitable use cases for this cooler. And there's even a CPU compatibility list. I would definitely check that out if you are in the market for one of these coolers, because it is passive. It's a lot more case sensitive than a cooler with a fan on it. Now obviously later in the video we are going to completely ignore all of those recommendations uh, but before we get into that let's strap it to an i9-11900K and see how well it handles that hot boy CPU in a light-ish gaming load. Okay so we've got GTA 5 running and uh, the temperatures are climbing pretty quickly. Okay but we're currently running at like you know, high 60s, low 70s on the CPU. I'm curious to see how long it's gonna be able to keep this up. If it'll be able to like, if the temperatures will stabilize or if it's gonna keep climbing until nuclear fusion happens. At this point, we've done a full just lap of, of the GTA 5 map. And uh, yeah, it's in the high 80s at this point, mid to high 80s. Uh, so I'm gonna do another lap and see if it can handle that. Because yeah, at this point it's doing better than I was expecting, quite frankly. Now after that failed attempt to steal a car, I am at the point where I've done two rounds of the map. And um, yeah, it's not even started throttling yet. I guess it will at some point, but I'm very quickly losing interest. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna switch off two of the cores and then reduce the core frequency a little bit and then see how it handles that kind of situation. Now here we have it running with only six cores on the 11900K. And as you can see, I clocked it down to 4.2 gigahertz. So it's not running as fast and there's uh, fewer cores active. Now before I didn't have the, the power usage reading up, 
uh, but I did have hardware uh, info running in the background recording it and over the test session there was an average power utilization of about a hundred watts uh, so this is down to about the mid 60s so yeah hopefully the cooler will handle it better now after quite a long run it seems like this cooler is able to effectively deal with about 65 ish watts of continuous load in an open air test situation like this uh, the temperatures have been pretty stable through this long test. Uh, but that's not why we're here. We're going to see if we can cool a GPU passively with it. So yeah, let's, let's try that out. Okay, so this is going to get ghetto really quickly. Now the reason that I have a PCIe riser cable is because it's going to be really difficult to like mate these two together. So if we have a PCI riser cable, we can actually lie the graphics card flat down so then gravity will give us a bit of help. But the problem is, as you can see here, the cooler is lopsided. So I can't just use gravity and hope that the weight of the cooler can give us decent thermal contact, uh, although it is pretty heavy, so it may help, but um, I do still need to secure it down somehow. I mean, is there really any other way to do it than zip ties? Oh, um, okay, well, there's actually much less cooling on the video memory and the VRM than I was expecting. I thought there was like little heat sinks and stuff. I think it should be okay. I'm not 100% sure though. I'll have a fan kind of blowing on, on the PCB. That may help. I also may just kind of thermal pad stick this GT 1030 cooler to it like that. <laughs> That'll just kind of make me feel better, you know, I don't think it'll actually do anything, but maybe it'll help. Sometimes my genius staggers even myself. So what we have going here is we have the cooler like zip tied down at the base, and then we've got a microphone stand that's kind of holding it up. So you can see that it's leaning quite nicely against that microphone stand. When you look at it down here, I don't think we've got the best thermal contact going here, but I think it should do the job because I've got quite a lot of thermal paste under there. And then back there, we have what is definitely the most important part, a GT1030 heatsink just thermal padded to the VRAM. So yeah, I don't know, this may actually work. Yeah, let's power it up and see if anything interesting happens. Hey, look at that. We've got a video out. Okay, it's it's slowly starting to put bits of load on the GPU and uh, the temperatures are climbing quite rapidly. I, I have a feeling the moment that it's going to load into the game, it's just going to be sod. Oh, straight to 90 degrees Celsius. Um, and it's immediately throttled down to 300 megahertz. Uh, yeah, I don't think this is going very well. Yo, so if I push it down, look at how quickly the temperatures drop. There's definitely a thermal contact issue. Uh, I'm gonna have to rethink the mounting. Because if I let it go, straight up to 90 and it be sods. Five minutes later. So now what I've done is just kind of wedged a box between the motherboard and the heatsink. And that actually seems to make better contact. So yeah, hopefully that works. Let's try that again. With the very high tech box wedge fix, uh, we've already dropped 20 degrees Celsius from this point last time. Uh, so that's a good, that's a good sign. I think the age old box wedge trick may, may have worked there. Oh, look at that. It's actually running. I mean, it's very quickly climbing to 90 degrees Celsius, but it's working. Again, I feel like our core frequency is slowly creeping down, but we're still getting a very similar frame rate. Like it's not really slowing the gaming performance down much. I actually kind of want to push down on it again and see how much like the temperatures drop. Yo, look at how the temperature drops when you when you push down on it. Oh, if I can mount this properly, it'll work so well. Yeah, because the moment I let it go, it, it, it shoots back up into the 80s.
Okay, so I've wedged the box in better, and now I'm not touching it, and it's sitting in the 50s. There we go, that is the result I was looking for. Hell yeah, because now it's at the point where the cooler is gonna start thermally saturating, and then, and then it'll, it'll heat up from there, because it's actually got proper contact now. Now, after ages of driving around, we are still not over 70 degrees Celsius on the GPU, which is pretty crazy. I, I did not expect it to work this well, especially that like the main fix was just wedging a box under it. <laughs> like that, that was all I needed for proper thermal contact. And with that, it brings me to the end of another video. If you liked it, please do like and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this one. And until the next video, bye-bye.